Income tax 2021-2022, reporting rental income expenses and losses, part number three. Get ready to get refunds to the max, dive it in income tax 2021-2022. Most of this information can be found in Publication 527, Residential Rental Property Tax Year 2021 on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Income tax formula, we're focused on line one, income, although we would have a separate subschedule, basically an income statement with income and expenses, expenses basically being deductions, the net then what rolls in to line one income of the income tax formula as well as eventually page one of the form 1040. This is the schedule E, basically that income statement schedule called the supplemental income and loss. We're focused on the rental real estate. So we've been talking about losses with regards to real estate. So it's a little bit different when we record the schedule E from the schedule C, because when we talk about the schedule C, we're usually talking about an, an active business, possibly a service business where we actively participate. When we talk about the schedule E, although it's the same kind of like income statement type of schedule income minus expenses that rolls in eventually to page one of the 1040, the IRS is more skeptical in particular about losses with regards to the schedule e we're thinking now about the passive activity kind of limitation so they kind of say they said back uh, at some point that all rental activities were just going to label as basically passive activities unless there's exceptions and those exceptions have these key terms if you're a real estate professional then you'd qualify for a real estate professional possibly then being able to take more of the losses and not being as subject to the passive activity rules. That's a key term we've discussed. And then we talked about kind of, uh, if you active, if you actively participate, then although you're still subject to the, pa the passive activity rules, you might have some allowance for the deduction of losses against not just passive income, but possibly against other income as well, such as like W2 income or active participation income. So, we're now on the maximum special allowance. The maximum uh, special allowance is $25,000 for single individuals and married individuals filing a joint return for the tax year. So, so the $25,000 is that special component you might have then. $12,500 for married individuals who file separate returns for the tax year and lived apart from their spouses at all times during the tax year. So you got that special kind of rule for the married filing separate. Remember that with the regards to the filing statuses, we can think of them in terms of your options if married, your options if not married. If not married, then you might be single filing status or you might be head of household filing status. If married, then you typically would be filing married filing joint unless you opted to file for married filing separate. You can't go back from married if you're legally married at that point, generally, unless some exception applies, going back to single or head of household, unless there's like a divorce or a separation or something uh, like that. So once again, it's at 25,000 for single individuals and married individuals filing a joint return for the tax year. But then we've got that 12,005 for married individuals who file separate returns for the tax year and lived apart from their spouses at all times during the tax year. $25,000 for a qualified uh, estate uh, re re uh, reduced by the special allowance for which their surviving spouse qualified. If you're MAGI, that's your adjusted gross income with a modifier in front of it, basically your income threshold is 100,000 or less, 50,000 or less if married filing separately, you can deduct your loss up to the amount specified above, which was the 25,000. If your MAGI, your adjusted gross income modified, modified AGI, your income threshold is more than 100,000, more than 50,000 if married filing separately, your special allowance is limited to 50% of the difference between 150,000, 75,000 if married filing separately and your MAGI, your modified adjusted gross income. Generally, if your MAGI is 150,000 uh, or more, 75,000 uh, if you are married filing separately, there is no special allowance. So just for a quick look at that, if we've got our schedule E here, we've got a substantial loss. The rent's at 120. We've got this big loss of 264 and then we're being limited on it 
with the passive activity rules of the 25,000, which you can see on form 8582, 8582, and we're saying that they actively participate and so on. And so they got the 25,000 uh, loss limit. So if I go to the page one of the form 1040, I've got the 100,000 of income and the loss is limited here of the 25,000 limit for the passive due to passive activity. Now, if I bring the income W2 income, other income up above 100,000 to 125,000, you can see that we have a, a more severe limitation due to that AGI, the income phase out in terms of how much the loss we can calculate, which would be calculated on form 8582 uh, passive activities. And if we go over on the 1040, over 150, I'm at 151,000. And I go back to the Schedule E, you can see the loss is not being pulled over anymore. The passive activity threshold is, is, now, uh, is now kicking in due to the higher level or threshold of income, basically phasing it out. So modified adjusted gross income, the MAGI, this is your adjusted gross income from 1040, 1040 SR, 1040 NR, line 11, figured without taking into account. So when, whenever you think about this modified AGI, we're basically starting with the AGI on page one here, which is your adjusted gross income, and then making whatever modifications would be necessary for whatever thing we're talking about, which in this case includes number one, the taxable amount of social security or equivalent tier one railroad retirement benefits. Number two, the deductible contributions to traditional individual retirement accounts, IRAs and section 501c18 pension plans. Number three, this is, the exclusion from income of interest from series EE and, and IUS uh, savings bonds used to pay higher education expenses. Number four, the exclusion of amounts received under the employer's adoption assistance program. And number five, any passive activity income or laws included on form 8582. Number six, any rental real estate loss allowed to real estate professionals. Number seven, any overall loss from a publicly traded partnership, see publicly traded partnership PTPs and the instructions for form 8582. Number eight, the deduction allowed for one half of self-employment tax. Number nine, the deduction allowed for interest paid on student loans. And number 10, the deduction allowed for foreign derived intangible income and global and tangible low income. So obviously that's a lot of a, a lot of <laughs> kind of adjustments, a lot of modifiers on the AGI there. Tax software will of course uh, be useful to help us out with some of those modifiers, but you wanna be aware of them for tax planning uh, as well when you're thinking about, you know, advising people in tax planning, trying to project this stuff into the future against software is helpful with the projections as well. So, okay, form 8582 not required. Don't complete form 8582 if you meet all of the following conditions. So you don't have to have that passive activity form if the following conditions are met. Uh, your only passive activities were rental real estate activities in which you actively participated your overall net loss from these activities is 25,000 or less. So for example, here, if I was to take a look at this, I've got the schedule E, I've got, I actively participate, we're saying here, and the loss is less than, than the 25,000 there. Okay, so we're gonna go back on over. Overall net loss from these activities is 25,000 or less, or less if married filing separately and you lived apart from your spouse all year. Uh, if married filing jointly, you lived apart from your spouse uh, all year. Uh, you have no prior year unallowed losses from these or any other uh, act passive activities. You have no current or prior year unallowed credits from passive activities. So the prior, you know, the prior year, if we had unallowed losses would affect the, the current year and we'd have to get a more detailed return to have deal with those carryover kind of things. Your MAGI, your adjusted gross income, modified adjusted gross income is 100,000 or less, 50,000 or less if married filing separately and you lived apart from your spouse all year. You don't hold any interest in a rental real estate activity as a limited partner or a beneficiary of an estate or a trust. If you meet all the conditions listed above, your rental real estate activities aren't limited by the passive activities rules and you don't have to complete form 8582, which is nice. Odd lines 23A through 23E of the Schedule E enter applicable amounts. So here's 23A, you can see here, 
and then you've got your you've got your basically the uh, deduction that what took into place so you've got line 20 was your expenses then we've got basically our loss then we're thinking about our uh, restrictions on the possible lo losses looking at form 6198 and then more likely for most like individual taxpayers we're, we're focused here on the passive activity limitations but we're under the threshold of the 25,000 so we're picking up the 19,040 uh, and then line 23 total all amounts reported on line three total all amounts on line four and so on and so forth for these amounts down here and then your losses then we have on line uh, 25 add royalty losses from line 21 and so on and then we can see this basically flowing through eventually to the form 1040 which we're taking against other income which is the active income not passive income on the w2 uh, side of things okay so casualty and thefts as a result of casualty or theft, you may have a loss related to your rental property. You may be able to deduct the loss on your income tax return. Casualty. Uh, this is a damage, destruction, or loss of property resulting from an identifiable event that is sudden, unexpected, or unusual. Such events include a storm, fire, or earthquake. Theft. This is, this is defined as the unlawful taking or, and removing of your money or property with the intent and uh, to deprive you of it right <laughs> they're probably intending to do to improve them rather than deprive you but they're depriving you in order to improve them in any case gain from casualty or theft it is also possible to have a gain from a casualty or theft if you receive money including insurance that is more than your adjusted basis in the property generally you must report this gain however under certain circumstances you may defer paying tax by choosing to postpone reporting the gain to do this you must generally buy replacement property within two years after the close of the first tax year in which any part of your gain is realized in certain circumstances the replacement period can be greater than two years you can see replacement period in publication 547 if that applies to you on the irs website for more information the cost of replacement property must be equal to or more than the net insurance or other payment you received more information for information on business and non-business casualty and theft losses you can take a look at publication 547 how to report if you had a casualty or theft that involved property used in your rental activity figure the net gain or loss in section b of form 4684 casualty and thefts of uh, follow the instructions for form 4684 for where to carry your net gain or loss so we have an example here in february 2016 mary bought a rental house for one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars house one hundred twenty thousand land fifteen thousand and immediately began renting it out in 2021 she rented it all uh, it all 12 months for a monthly rental fee of one thousand one hundred twenty-five dollars in addition to her rental income of thirteen thousand five hundred which is the 12 times the 1225 mary had the following expenses mortgage interest fire insurance miscellaneous repairs real estate taxes imposed and paid maintenance that's 8250 400 500 and 200 respectively mary depreciated the residential rental property under makers uh, gds the depreciation method this means using the straight line method over a recovery period of 27.5 years she uses table 2-2d to find her depreciation percent because she placed the property in service in february 2016 she continues to use that row of table 2-2d for year six the rate is 3.636 percent Mary figures her net rental income or loss for the house as follows. She's got the total rental income, which is the 1,125 times 12. That's going to be the 13,500. She subtracts out the expenses for the mortgage interest, the fire insurance, the miscellaneous repairs, the real estate taxes, the maintenance, total expenses coming to then the 9,350. That gives the balance of the 4,150. She takes out the depreciation then, which is the 120,000 times the rate of the 3.63% for 4,363 to come up with the net loss on the house of 
$213. Mary had a net loss for the year because she actively participated in her passive rental real estate activity and her loss was less than $25,000, she can deduct the loss on her return. Mary also meets all the requirements for not having to file Form 8582. She uses Schedule E Part 1 to report her rental income and expenses. She enters her income, expenses, and depreciation for the house in the column for Property A and enters her loss on Line 22, Form 4562 isn't required.